And I'm just going to give you words from the interview. I worked inside. I thought a lot. I listened to things. I looked deep into myself. I took an account of conscience, the mystical dimension. Think again and again, much time in prayer, careful interior discernment, interior experience. Ignatius was a mystic, not an ascetic. We have to give breath for spiritual lungs, nearness. Uh, we ha and he goes on and on. The heart burns, the saving love. There is an interiority uh, to the Pope that invites a, re a remembrance, not just of Ignatius, but of the great mystics of the church. Uh, the mystics like I Eckhart, who said that there is a spirit that alone is free. I think the church has been afraid of the spirit, to be honest, in many respects. I think the church has been afraid of freedom, historically, political freedom, but con contemporarily spiritual freedom. Uh, I think the church has not invited, uh, Thomas Keating says the, the most natural language uh, of human beings is silence. And you can be a Catholic and never be told to be silent, never be taught to be silent, never be invited to be silent, never be invited to welcome silence in a way that invites self-discovery, connection, relationality, and unity. Uh, the great mystics of the church are amongst the greatest spiritual writers in the history of human civilization, and most Catholics don't know a thing about them. Most Catholics don't read Teresa's poetry. They don't study John's uh, uh, spirituality. They don't uh, listen to Eckhart's uh, sermons. Uh, they don't listen to uh, Hildegard of Bingen's great music. They don't know anything. Uh, and I will say, not to be accusatory, because maybe people in this room are saying, well, I know all those people, and, and maybe you do. <laughs> But most, I didn't, I'll, I'll say that. I, I reached the age of 25 without knowing any of them in any degree of depth and not really knowing that they had an invitation to me to recognize that God was a question and that the source of that question was within me. So I think the great hope of this pope, and I don't want to overplay the pope because we're talking about the council. The council talked about hopes and fears, anxieties and anguishes of the people of God. Yes, it's universal. But I think we've only just begun to figure out how to actually listen to hopes and fears and anxieties and pains and anguish in a way that ritualizes prayer in a prayerful way in, in, the, in, our, in our iconography of service, uh, the healing dimensions of the gospel. So if you said to me, what are they missing? What are we missing? It sounds really trite, but I think we're missing love. <laughs> I think this pope is talking about what it means, as Ignatius says, to, or as Arupe said, to fall in love. I never, heard, I never heard anyone say, yeah, you love God. I heard that. But no one, until I read Arupe or Lonergan, or, told me to fall in love with God. I never heard that in a church until I was in my 30s. Um, I don't think we can expect people who are going to yoga who are learning Buddhist meditation, who are watching television shows and doing self-help, who are trying to create a sense of wholeness in their lives, to come to a Catholic church and expect the traditional format in which we've created parish life to satisfy that hunger and not feel at some level they have to go elsewhere. 